What's up, everybody? I'm Chris Eaton, and welcome to episode 88, Snakes and a Fat Man. So I ran into uh, John Lehman over at uh, NARBC about a month ago. And as we were fucking walking down the aisles, I said to him, uh, I go, John, wouldn't it be cool if users on Morph Market could actually create searches and then get alerts when animals were listed that matched those search results? I mean, that way they wouldn't have to spend all their time in front of a fucking screen, right? And John turned to me and said, that's the fucking best idea I've ever heard, Chris. Why didn't I think of that? And I basically told him, I mean, like, that's why you pay me the big bucks. I'm the idea guy. Then I said, you know what would be cooler is that maybe you could make it so that they get an email or a mobile notification whenever, let's say, I posted a new animal for sale. If it were me, I would want to give a link to my followers so that they could set it up in fucking seconds and then get alerts right in the fucking app, right? Like, what do we have that fucking app for if we're not going to use it? So the reality of it is, all of you could thank me now because that's the feature that John just added to Morph Market. Their new version of Animal Search that I came up with lets you set up all kinds of filters and save searches and turn on alerts and then anyone could share a link so that others can have that alert as well that means that your potential customers won't miss anything from you it'll be a fucking feeding frenzy man there's a video on morph market's blog that shows exactly how to do this if you need any help so stop being fucking lazy and build your goddamn business go create an alert and share it with your followers now only at morphmarket.com. All right, what do we got going on over at the old uh, Herp Shows? I'll tell you what they got going on. Fucking on November 5th and 6th, they're going to be in Lafayette, Louisiana. On November 12th and 13th, they're going to be in Pearland, Texas. Did I say that right? I think I did. On December 3rd and 4th, they're gonna be in Austin, Texas. On December 10th and 11th, they're gonna be in Slidell, Louisiana. Then, first show of the new year, first show of 2023, they're gonna be in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, on January 14th and 15th. Then they're gonna be down in Texas again the next fucking week, January 21st and 22nd. They're gonna be in Longview. Then, on January 28th and 29th, they're back in Conroe, Texas, the fucking big show. Oh, man, okay, well, we're well into February of next year, and on February 25th and 26th, they're gonna be in Corpus Christi, Texas. 
Curb shows are still fucking packing in the bodies, man. And fucking Sean and Lori are fucking crushing it. Go check out herbshow.net for any of these fucking uh, dates again if you have to get reminded. And uh, why don't you uh, shoot an email over to uh, Sean and Lori. Tell them what a fucking amazing job they're doing. All right, so the end of the year is quickly approaching. And you know what that means for me fucking vacation from this dumb dick and fart joke podcast. All right, well, that's that's not exactly true, okay? Historically, um, I've been in the hospital in either December or January, and I'm just trying to be proactive, man, okay? And let's hope that this is my second year in a row not in the hospital uh, in January or December, but what I'm doing is I just want to make sure that if I was, that would be in my vacation uh, time. So looking out for you guys always. So usually November 15th is my last show of the year. However, not this year. We're gonna have at least one Fat Man Live show in December, at least one open Zoom call for Reptile Keepers in December, and one bonus episode of this show right here, Snakes and a Fat Man, is gonna drop in December as well. Me and the old uh, eyeballs guys actually got together again and re-recorded the episode that we tried to bring you a couple of months back. And I'm going to drop that on December 1st. It's just going to be a bonus episode for uh, 2022. On top of that, we have the All Hot Chicks episode, UK edition, coming to you around Thanksgiving time. And on top of that, even, we're releasing one 15 Minutes of Lame, Where Are They Now episode every 10 days until the end of the year. I know what you're thinking. You're like, holy shit, Chris, that's a lot. But wait, faithful listener and watcher, there is more. On November 17th, open voting starts for the best of 15 minutes of lane 2022. You could just head on over to snakesandafatman.com. There's gonna be a big fucking blue button that says 15 minutes of lane contest, and you could vote every 24 hours for your favorite 15 minutes of lane, lane contestant of 2022. You have a bunch of different votes that you want to cast. You could cast one a day for however many uh, potential winners that you want there to be. Great thing about this whole thing is voting doesn't close until midnight on December 24th. So you could vote once, fucking seven times a week, or 30 times a month, up until midnight, December 24th. And then the winner is gonna be announced on the birthday of little baby Jesus on December 25th, fucking Christmas. The winner will get an interview on the main spot of the first Snakes and a Fat Man show of 2023 on January 1st. They also get to pick their own first 15 minutes of lame contestant for 2023. They get a bunch of snakes and a fat man swag. And best of all, they get to walk around fucking with the title of lamest of the lame for the entire calendar year of 2023. Right now, you're probably saying to yourself, holy shit, Chris, that's insane. We're getting so much fat man dick shoved into our faces until the end of the year. Well, you better leave room for the fucking balls because I got more. I'm actually heading to an undisclosed location this month and we're starting shooting of the No More Balls Tour. And I figure if the stadium tour musicians could do it, I could do it too. I know this thing has been put off for a year, but we're actually heading out for our first show uh, sometime, no, I think at the end of November this month. And I'm not even gonna tell you where I'm going, but I promise you it's gonna be cool as fuck. And that tour is gonna start dropping on YouTube sometime in January of 2023. Speaking of 2023, we got some new sponsors hopping aboard. First, my boy Frank Cusolini of Geeky Gecko Creations. Go show this guy some love at Geeky Gecko Creations on the old Instagram. Hey, I gotta be honest, it never hurts to have more Italians in your corner. Plus, my main guest on this show signed up for 2023, the legendary Robin Marklin of Redline Shipping. A as a matter of fact, you guys should take a listen to this right now. We're excited to announce our new sponsor, Redline Shipping. Redline is the new kid on the shipping block, and yet 
the old kid on the shipping block. Seeing as Redline founder Robin Markland co-founded Ship Your Reptiles in 2009 as well. Robin is back with a powerhouse team, a modern website that is smooth, fast, and easy to use, and fantastic shipping discounts for all of your live reptile, aquatic, and invert species needs. You can ship your merchandise and other dry goods with Redline as well. The discounts we're going to show here are for all services, including overnight, two-day, three-day, and ground. Redline Shipping offers on-time and live arrival insurance and world-class customer service. Partnered with Morph Market and NARBC, Redline Shipping is quickly becoming the industry fucking standard for shipping services. Robin would like to invite all of you guys to come on over to the Redline booth over at uh, NARBC St. Louis and the Phoenix Reptile Expo, both happening in November of 2022. Use code ROBIN60, should be right on the bottom of the screen here, uh, for 60% off the FedEx retail rate on your first two shipments. And once you've used that coupon, Use this coupon, FATMAN5, for an additional $5 off your already discounted price on another shipment. Get with the program. Join Team Redline. Go visit them, like, right now. Like, put this on pause and go visit redlineshipping.com. How fucking cool is that, huh? Fucking snakes and a fat man, where all the big dogs play. Look at it. Look at it. That right there is the best coconut substrate on the fucking planet. Look at this right here. This is also the best coconut substrate on the fucking planet, but it's in a bag. Now this right here is the best coconut chip on the fucking planet. However, it's in a bigger bag. Brick, small bag, bigger bag, whatever. Reptichip is hands down the best substrate for your reptiles. It's the only substrate I actually use here at the Fat Cave. Why? Because it's the best coconut substrate on the fucking planet and I've been using it for years. And JT Tomlinson, one of my very best good friends, is the president of the company. Want to know something else that JT started? The Reptolution Apparel Company that gives 100% of the profits it receives back to the reptile community. There's always people and organizations in this hobby in need of some kind of help. And Reptolution is being proactive in giving to USR, Herb's Family Fund. Anybody in the community that experienced some kind of tragedy, uh, JT, Reptichip, and Reptolution is there for them. You see anybody else being proactive like this? Let me answer that for you. No, you don't. Head on over to Reptichip.com and pick up a bag a block, a brick, a, a, a box even. They're doing boxes. Boxes of Reptichip now. Um, pick up a Reptolution shirt if you're feeling sexy. Uh, a, lot, a lot of fun stuff. They, they, they got it all there. Red Line Science, um, uh, tools, shit scrapers. They got everything. It's a one-stop shop, man. You can buy your reptile shit and clothes. Same place. Uh, again, go buy a brick, a bag, box, a shirt. Whatever, just get on it. Reptichip.com. The ball python industry has never been more complex. Clutch makes managing your collection simple. This brand new cloud based web platform created by Canova allows you to create, search, and filter your ball python inventory with ease, visualize your projects with innovative analytics and insights. Keep track of past, present, and future clutches with a virtual incubator and connect every customer with the perfect animal using a robust weightless system. Ah, I hate that word. We got to find another word for fucking robust. The biggest feature is that it's easy. It's super simple to accomplish anything in this program. Anything that comes out of the Canova headquarters just works. Beta launched October 24th, and it's not too late to sign up to test it out. To get on the waitlist for Clutch Beta, you could sign up at cltch.io. That's clutch.io. Once again, for all you morons out there, cltch.io. Know you. Fucking know you, baby. It's not about you. It's about me. 
Discover the power of your collection whenever inspiration strikes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Snakes in the Batman proudly brings to you its new breeder segment, 15 Minutes of Life! Hey guys, it's Justin at Canova. So in the past few years, Canova's become the top source for amazing ball pythons. Now Chris tells me, Justin, it's time to give back. So we're sponsoring the 15 minutes of Lane to support the new and upcoming breeders. So jump in here, let's hear your ideas, let's hear your thoughts. Maybe you can turn your 15 minutes of Lane into 20 years of Lane, just like I did. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man, Woo! so bring it. 15 minutes of Lane! What's up, everybody? Look who I got here. My, my fucking friend and Patreon supporter, Brian McGrath from fucking Heathen Hatchery. How are you, brother? Doing awesome, man. Feeling good. How you doing? Oh, you know, I'm just doing this shit again and again and again. And, you know, but, you know, you know taking two weeks off in December. So uh, you're doing important work, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm very sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how this fucking works you're gonna get 15 minutes to pimp your shit and uh that 15 minutes is gonna start now okay so heathen hatchery i like the name Where, where'd the name come from um just wanted something different something a little more darker viking themes mostly so okay. i went with that Okay, well, well, it's, it's a cool name. I give you, I give you an eight out of ten on Heathen Hatchery. Oh, cool. and you're down in Florida, right? So, yes. there, there's so many good people down in Florida. There's Steve Casino. There's Jen Kate. Why should people buy from you? Truthfully, I, uh, I feel I had a great mentor, and I was just taught the right way. Okay. Um, and who, my who animals are very healthy. They're taken care of. I breed my own rats, so I know what they're fed. So, I mean, everything's in-house. And who was your mentor? Uh, CL Serpents in Oklahoma. What the fuck? That's a made-up word. Oklahoma, <laughs> <laughs> where? It's in Florida. It's a little town in Florida. All right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Um, it took me six months to pronounce that fucking name right, man. Aka Waka. Fucking. <laughs> oh, all, right. all right. Well, how, how long have you been doing this? Uh, this is my first year breeding on my own. Last year I had help with it. So this year is actually my first year breeding on my own. Okay. And how many clutches did you hatch out this year? This year I hatched out three clutches and three split clutches with... The, uh, my mentor. Okay, the guy over in uh, Chewbacca? Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> okay. right. And um, so, so you basically got six clutches under your belt right now? Yes. Okay. And w w with that few so far, are you a show guy yet or no? Um, no, I'm going to dip my feet into the show scene next year. Um, I don't know. I like... Right now, vending doesn't appeal to me. I'd rather go to shows and hang out and meet people. Right. Well, that's always the more fun part, right? Like yeah, when you absolutely. got a vendor show, it, it, I, it automatically just, uh, becomes work. Being so. stuck behind a table, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy that as much as walking around and talking to people. Right. And have you been to any of the big shows yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, I went to Daytona this year. I met a lot of cool people that I've been talking to on the internet. Mm -hmm. Have um, you ever been to uh, Tinley or uh, Arlington or... No, I'm going to go to Tinley next year, uh, Vegas. I'm going to make trips out of it, actually. So I'm going to dedicate to going just to hang out a couple of them big shows. Right, right. And, and that's kind of the fun fun part, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's like, it, it, it's like when you actually have to work the show, it, it does take a lot of the fucking fun out of it, man. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. like, just being stuck behind the table all day and wanting to go talk to people and see other people's displays. and Right. And ha have you spent money on uh, on show stuff yet in preparation for all this? 
Um, not yet. I'm just starting to get all my logo stuff together, making sure that nobody else has the same thing because I've already happened to me once. Yeah, for a logo I paid for too, which was a pain in the ass to change around everything. Yeah, that that that's kind of uh, in a way, it, it's a big shout out to to Stewart uh, Design SD Identity on Instagram it, because you can't just have any fucking idiot do your logo because at, at the end of the day, the the logo is so much more than a piece of uh, clip art. Yeah, that, you know, thrown on something with your name on it. So I mean, that's how people recognize you. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's also a, a way to kind of show you off before they even know you, right? You know. So, uh, you know, again, don't go with that fucking idiot that charges two hundred dollars and think you're going to get something original. You know? <laughs> no, I've, I've learned the hard happen. way, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so now, how many snakes do you have at your place right now? Oh, uh, close to a hundred at the moment. That many, huh? Yeah, I ended up absorbing somebody else's collection that couldn't do it anymore. Right. So, and I, I would never recommend doing that to anybody, man. What a pain in the ass this has been. Oh, I bet. You know, with all the quarantining and it's, all that other shit they it's, have to it's do. It's so much work. Yeah. And is this your full-time gig right now? No, I'm a commercial roofing foreman. Oh, okay. So you're you're coming home. After working a 60 hour week to a hundred fucking snakes to take care of. Yes. Okay. And do you have a wife and family? I have my 18 year old son lives with me because he works with me. Right. But now they're, I mean, I'm talking to somebody, but other than that, no. All right. Okay, cool. So at least you have that. So yeah, I mean, does I got your all the 18... time in the world to do this right now. Right. Does your 18 year old kid help you out? Hell no. I've even offered him percentages of sales and he still won't get into it. It's like, God, it goes, damn, man. Man. they don't give a fuck. No, nah, you know, at all. he it, just broke up with his girlfriend. So he's chasing girls all around now. Uh, that's what he should be doing right it's now. A, yeah, I like, no. I'm proud of him. <laughs> so so that, that's what it should be, especially uh, now. Wh what part of Florida are you in? Uh, North Central. So okay. if, um, just uh, east of Ocala. Okay. All right. And you've only been there for a couple of years now, right? Yeah, about six years. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's fucking hot down there, man. It's so fucking hot, swamp ass muggy. It yeah, it's really ugh. And I and I, and I roof doing this shit too. It's like wow, what a dumb fucking decision this was. Yeah, yeah. They say <laughs> they say mothers have the hardest job in the world, but I would probably say roofing in July in Florida is probably one of the hardest jobs in the world, right? It tests your patience for sure, man. There's been yeah. some arguments on the roof. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, now let's just talk some sponsors here. Um, do you use Reptichip? I do. My breeder females are all on Reptichip, and soon all of them will be also. That's fucking awesome. JT Tomlinson does not give Brian McGrath a fuck you. I looked for okay. my, rep, my uh, Reptolution shirt, but I couldn't find it. That's okay. What, are you rocking a Canova shirt now? Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trying to knock them of, down one by one, you know? <laughs> speaking of Canova, uh, have you ever bought a snake from Justin? Uh, no, I haven't yet. Not okay, yet. Well. Um, that's one of those guys where I think if you're going to buy a snake from him, you need to come correct with a handful of money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think? For sure. Uh, fucking. Well, Justin, until you do buy one, gives you a giant <laughs> fuck you. Uh, have you ever been to a herp show? I haven't traveled that far yet. Oh, fucking Sean Gray gives you a giant fuck you. Well, your show has inspired me to do so next year. It, they're really fun shows. So, so it's definitely worth the drive. I don't know if it's worth a fourteen-hour drive, which I think it is for you. But um, we'll it's, it's a fun show. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you only do um, uh, ball pythons? Um, that's all I breed. I keep other stuff, too, but unfortunately not boas. Ah, so you never even bought a snake from Bow Affliction. <laughs> Kenny no. Sato gives you a giant <laughs> fuck you. Uh, do you have a focus cubed habitat cage in the house? Again, no, you're going to kill me on this one, too. But eventually I will, because I'm going to get them little stupid fucking milk frogs. Ugh. Well, 
Milk frogs are probably pretty cool, but Ashley and Steven give you a, a, a giant fuck you. Uh, I'm looking at your logo, and that was not a fucking Blake Stewart, fucking Stewart design logo. Not yet. Man, fucking Blake Stewart, probably one of the nicest, smartest guys in the hobby, just gives Brian McGrath a giant fuck you. I'm just I'm uh, getting killed right now. Do you use Morph Market? Yes, I do. Do you have an account with Morph Market? I certainly do. Okay, so John Lehman does not give you a fuck you. And that that's actually pretty good, but you got two out of fucking... Oh, my new sponsor, Redline Shipping. Have you ever used Redline Shipping? I'm switching over to them currently. Uh-uh. All right, so Robin Marklin gives you a possible fuck you, but also a possible not fuck you. Maybe so I'll, you I, mean, I, I wouldn't feel right using other people's boxes and their labels. I mean, is that acceptable? Hey, anything you send through Robin is acceptable. So, All right, well, then I'll yeah. print my label through them from now on and, and get my fucking, shipping stuff in the future. 2.5 out of 9. <laughs> if this was college, you would definitely fucking fail out. Right? <laughs> That's why I'm a roofer. <laughs> right. Now... What what are your big projects? Like, what's your most expensive snake? Um, my most expensive snakes are probably all my female double heads that I'm growing up. Okay, so you you're working on double head what? Uh, clown DG, uh, genetic stripe clown, uh, clown hypo. Oh, you're going after that dumb fucking kiki ball? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, genetic stripe, right? That's the Kiki ball, right? Yeah, that's the uh, what is that? The clown yeah. genetic stripe DG. That's a or fucking just dumb clown name. genetic stripe. I I don't even know because the name just turns me off so much to it mm-hmm. that it's yeah, like I'm, I'm yeah. looking for the morphs that throw more pattern back into the genetic stripe though, instead of washing it out. Try and get puzzle in there, man, somewhere yeah. because fucking puzzle fucking kills. No. Now. How long, how long have you actually been doing this? Like, like when did you get your first snake down there in Florida? Oh, about four years ago, I got a ball python for my kid who wanted it for his birthday. I had no interest in these things. I didn't, not even on my fucking radar at the time. Right. So I bought him this birthday present, and I ended up taking care of it. I needed rats, so I got on Facebook, asked locally, found somebody, Met their husband who breeds ball pythons, and here I am. Oh, and since four years ago, how much money have you dumped into this dumb business? <laughs> so I've actually thought about this because I knew this question was coming. I added up a total of about 18 grand so far spent. Okay, well, 18 grand is not, that's a responsible number. Right, you know, you know, it's not like a hundred and forty thousand and then fucking. <laughs> Dude, some of the people you, know. you have on here quit their jobs and everything. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit, I do not have balls that big. Yeah, I took out my retirement and fucking funded my ball python business. Yeah, I mean, oh. I, I'm too worried about my uh, 401k and my health benefits to even think about that. Right, it, smart man. Okay, now how much have you made <laughs> since you started this? Uh, back in the pocket, nothing about eight grand back into the business. Okay. So it's a growing, growing couple yes. of years. Okay. Yes. Okay. I made a How lot of long? mistakes in the beginning, buy them on site and all that garbage. You know what I mean? Like bought a bunch right. of mails and did everything, you know, the right way. <laughs> right. Right. Well, how long do you expect, um, to be doing this before you're comfortable with the return? Um, a couple more years. I'm pretty optimistic. And and is there a uh, a dream big mentality to go big like Justin or uh, Mutation Creation Billy up there in Canada, or is Absolutely it to keep not. it manageable? Absolutely not, man. That's that's what those guys are. You know, what I mean, I'm not that. I'm I'm just a roofer, man. That's doing this as a hobby. Right. So you're keeping it as a hobby, you think? Yeah, one hundred. Yeah, I mean, that's like cool. I'm too scared to take that jump. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, if, if you do things right, the hobby could could pay off. You, you know, you could get 60, 80 grand a year from this. You right. know, I have friends that basically just do it as a hobby 
I and always, that's about what they're making. I've always said if I can make about, I don't know, 75 to 80 grand four years in a row, I consider it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Not just one good year and then fucking Yeah, it have to be continuously. You quit everything. Now, <laughs> how could people get in touch with you if they had to get in touch with you? Um, easiest way is Instagram, Heathen Hatchery, um, Morph Market, Heathen Hatchery. My Brian McGrath Facebook, it, he didn't have you come up and fuck Facebook. Though I can't, I was just done with that fucking platform. So you're more an Instagram guy. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. That way I don't have to read everybody's fucking sap stories, and I could just look at their pictures. Yeah, that's a way to do it, right? I just, um, it's just awful. You, you don't have a YouTube or a TikTok, do you? Um, I do have a TikTok, but I can't remember the last time I've used it. Oh, fucking okay, that's. I just don't, I don't know. I just kind of feel like I'm too old for fucking TikTok. <laughs> yeah, no, no, dude, I get it, man. I have two fucking videos up there. You, you yeah, know, I mean, and, and I've had it for 10 months, you know. Twerking and snakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But, you, you know, at the end of the day, it puts you in front of some of the young people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for and, sure. I mean, that's and, the future, right? Well, yes and no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, we gotta I, skip I, a generation, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that actually, you know, is an interesting point. Like skipping a generation may be not a bad idea. Might be what you know? we need. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Well, and this is nice. Look at this. Boom, your time is up. But <laughs> you, you did it just on time, man. Excellent. Fucking, man. You, you really, you know, thank God you weren't a new breeder with fucking six clutches on your fucking uh belt. <laughs> and just uh, wasting time with fucking talking about other shit, you know? So so nicely done, my friend. I appreciate it. I appreciate um, that, man. Thank you. Well, I was fully everybody... expecting to get torn apart. <laughs> no, no. Well, well you, had, you had a shitty score on the fucking sponsor thing. I mean, yeah, we'll work on really that. Horrible. But yeah, hopefully when you come back for the where are they now, uh, you, you'll hopefully have remedied all of those. We'll definitely so, remedy a lot of that for sure. I plan you know, on we'll growing. Definitely so. See what happens, um, brother. Thank you again so much, man. I appreciate thank it. You. Everybody, go follow Heathen Hatchery on fucking Instagram, uh, not on YouTube, but not fucking on, on TikTok too. If any of you fucking fags are doing TikTok, follow Heathen Hatchery on TikTok. Ryan, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you, my friend. Bye bye. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Snakes and the Batman finally brings to you its new breeder segment, 15 Minutes of Life! Listen guys, Stewart Design doesn't just create logos, they build brands. What do I mean by this? Well, your brand has both a verbal and visual side. Think of this as your brand message and brand image. Your brand message is what initially draws clients to you and continually generates new business. After that, the quality of your product and service keeps them coming back and retains them. Without effective messaging, you're only going to be connecting with a small percentage of the clients you could be connecting with. Your brand message helps you clearly define who you are, how are you different from your competitors, what value you offer to your clients, and why potential clients should choose you over others. For this reason, Stewart Design always starts branding projects by developing your brand's message first. Creating a logo without understanding why and how it needs to look is only going to hold your company back and should be considered fucking malpractice. Stewart Design starts by clarifying your goals, audience, and industry. Then they form your messaging. After that, they strategically determine what colors, styles, and fonts make the most sense to use. And then finally, how the logo needs to look and function. You see, the visual identity of a company should be a natural result of proper strategy. Because the question really shouldn't be, do I like this? It should be, will this work? Stewart Design figures out what will actually work and provides you with a true investment to grow your business. When done right, it should attract the right people and it should reflect your business properly. 
It should make your company more memorable and it should build trust and credibility with your clients. On the other hand, if it's done poorly, it could do the exact opposite. It could make you look amateur and can actually deter your business. Don't settle for a fucking idiot that simply offers you a cheap logo. Build your brand the right way. Bring out your best so you could get it right from the start and finally move out of your mother's fucking basement, crush it at Tinley, Pomona, or Arlington, and build a life for yourself doing what you love. Contact Stewart Design today. You could reach them at sdidentity.com. Again, that's sdidentity.com. Man, I got to tell you, I'm so happy to have this guy back on the show. And I'm actually beyond thrilled that he's now a sponsor. And I got to be honest, I was a fan of this guy since the eyeball days when he would help us out personally with shipping all the way up to his fucking red line sign shit scrapers and now fucking red line shipping. I literally won't take any sponsors on this show unless I believe in their products. And I believe in Robin Marklin, and so should you. Here's my one-on-one -on -one with Robin Marklin of Redline Shipping. Hello, folks. Look who I got here. My fucking brand new sponsor and the official shipper of Snakes and the Fat Man, my, my old friend Robin Marklin. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, Chris. How are you, man? Thanks for having me on. No, of course. Just plugging away, man. I wanted to have you on, uh, but you were on MJ's, uh, and I didn't just want to have you on two weeks later, you, you know, because there's nothing worse than the same people being interviewed by the by different podcasts too many times, right? Like, like how many times, you, you know, are you going to be asked, like, how did you get your start or, you know, whatever, like, like everybody just knows. Right. So, um, you're here to talk about redline shipping, man. Now, just um, really, thing. the last time you were on, there was no redline shipping. There was redline science. Yep. And, uh, you know, we were talking about that, which is still, I mean, just something that fucking everybody talks about. And everybody talks about the shit scrapers and everybody talks about That's the not quality what of the tools. What's that? That's not what they're called. That's just what no, they're no, I, I, for. Yeah, no, I, that's what they, exactly. But uh, you, you've since branched out, man, and this is a pretty big thing with the uh, with the shipping because, I mean, I remember Delta Dash days, right, where you had to go to the airport, days too. and uh, it, it's just nice to have a couple of different options nowadays. Now. Uh, what what made you decide there's a hole in, in the shipping market? Um, I mean, I, you know, because I started uh, with uh, Shipping Reptiles back in 2009. Um, we were the first ones to to really do the model. Well, to do the model that it is, the, you know, third party um, selling packaging, doing the customer service, live rival insurance and that all that. Um, I had such a long time with that uh, to 2019. And the reality is I just, I don't know, I have a passion for shipping. I really love the business. I love this side of the business. And I just have such a history with it. I knew I could execute it really well. Right. Um, and like with Redline Science, which is a different company. I mean, they have a very similar name, um, but that's by design as well. Um it was an opportunity to work with partners that I've always wanted to work with. And so, uh, you know, some of the partners in Redline Science are also partners in Redline Shipping. But we also added some new partners as well. And again, just people that I've really admired over the years. Uh, people that have been around a long time. Um, like Brian Potter and Bob Ashley from NARBC. They're partners with me in Redline Shipping. I'm right. really excited about that. And then uh, John at Morph Market is, is partnered up with us as well. And I'm fucking super excited about that that was a both of those were difficult gets oh i would imagine so you know, they were yeah. aligned with syr and i actually did the alignment with syr in those days as well so i was able to use that relationship and that history and that experience to 
you know, encourage them to at least consider the new venture, Redline Shipping. And, you know, honestly, they're both super enthusiastic to do it. And uh, I was I was really stoked about that. At the same time, it's super humbling that they would be so eager to work with me. But, you know, again, I've, I've busted my ass for a lot of years doing doing this business. <coughs> I well, it shows in in the, in the way that those folks come out to support and and partner up with me. So, yeah, it was just it was the right time. It was the right the fall of 2022. Here is the right time to launch it. Uh, we launched. Uh, we tried to launch August 1st. You know how designing tech sites and and websites and shit goes. Uh, that can be difficult, but we we managed to launch in August. By the end of August, we were live. Right. We were, you know, well, August the uh, when you did launch, uh, there was. There was an overwhelming positive vibe going on about you guys. Okay, there was, uh, and it, there still is. I'm I'm having a hard time keeping up, really. With, yeah, that that's and, fucking awesome. It's been really awesome. Uh, the, a little bit overwhelming sometimes, but you know, I got a, I've got a great team. I've got a great staff, so you know, we're able to to keep up. But um, you know, yeah, I just you know, I mentioned before I talk to you. I spent the last few hours signing up, you know, four new accounts uh, just this afternoon with people that are interested in working with Redline Shipping. So yeah, just every day is is new folks and more folks. And um, what's crazy is I thought it would go well. I knew we could do, you know, a nice job and I thought we could execute really well. Um, I didn't anticipate it would go this well. Right. Um, so like I said, you know, seven weeks in, the volume and and business that we're doing at seven weeks, that that might have taken me three years to accomplish with SYR in the beginning. Right. Yeah, I believe it. Well, when you started in the beginning too, I'm sure there was uh, a lot of reluctance. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a really unfamiliar thing. Like I'm going to put my animals and my shipping out in in the hands of a different company, you know, right. uh, third party type situation. So the the not the concept of it was brand new. So yeah, there was a lot of reluctance. It was a slow build. Um, oh, I bet. I remember yeah. shipping back in the day, you know? Yeah. And I remember, you know, driving to the airport um, and doing the Delta Dash thing back in the 90s, you know, like you do. Um, and that was a giant pain in the nuts. Oh, every time. Yeah. And I don't understand. Like, we would ship out, you know, as pro exotics, we would ship out, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, you'd kind of save up all your shipments and take them at once. Right. But it seemed like every single time I drove to the Delta counter out at the airport, which is an hour away, it was like it was their first time they'd ever seen live animals right. being shipped. <laughs> you know, you'd get the just the big eyed, dopey look from the, the counter staff and be like, I don't know if we can do this. I was like, yeah. motherfucker, I was here last week. Doing right. this. <laughs> well, that, yeah. And, the and then process to get it underway. And yeah, it would take an hour and a half to get through the through the system and, and get out the door. So oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a nightmare. So I was I was very glad that we could uh, develop such a great relationship with. Originally, it was UPS, but then we had to switch to FedEx because they were much more supportive of the reptile right. industry. So um, yeah, it's been FedEx for a long time, and I'm back with you know FedEx now under Redline Shipping. Um, and you, so, UPS doesn't even do animal shipping, right? They do. No, they do. Oh, do they? It's, it's a bit of a misconception. They do animal shipping. They don't do snakes. Oh, okay. It's a stupid phobic thing. There's no other reason than just snake phobia. Gotcha. Okay. So you do lizards and amphibians and all that type of stuff, but they don't do snakes. Now, they will right. make an exception if you're bringing them a million-dollar account. Sure, they'll ship your snakes. Right. But well, for, it, for regular people, no. It, it says in the, in the UPS TOS, it says no snakes. No snakes. Okay. Yeah. But, but lizards are fine. Lizards are fine, yeah. What they don't do is they don't support the model that is redline shipping or ship your reptiles. Um, they don't support the third party thing. They're not okay. They're not down for that at all. So gotcha. You know, it's not an option uh, for the industry to move uh, that direction for for what we do for what redline right. shipping does. Whereas FedEx is very very supportive. Uh, they have a great live animal desk. Like they're, they're in charge of live shipping. Right. The, the live animal desk at FedEx, like they ship giraffes and they ship gorillas and they ship orcas and dolphins and, you know, yeah. porcupines and all kinds of other shit for like zoos. They ship a lot of horses for all the billionaire horse racing owners and shit. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I was, I was recently talking to somebody over at the Bronx Zoo and he's like, 
Mm. You'd be amazed that, you know, we ship a rhino through FedEx when yeah. we have to, you, you know? So I was just like, that. that's, that's interesting. And, and FedEx definitely has uh, a live animal division. Right. That, where, that's what makes the difference. UPS doesn't have that at all. So Right. Yeah, it's, it's just UPS, another package. It was, yeah, it was very unclear. There was a lot of gray areas back in 2009, 2010 when we were using UPS at the time. Whereas right. FedEx, once we switched over to FedEx, um, it's it's much more clear cut. Like I said, they have a live animal desk and they they do this live animal shipping. So it wasn't completely foreign to them. Right. Although they had no idea that I think the size of the reptile industry. That was oh, like, yeah. That was yeah. Like, Pro probably most people outside of the industry have no idea of the size of the scope of, mm -hmm. of the whole reptile industry, you know? Yeah, because the sure. reptile industry, what, what people tend to forget is it's not just ball pythons, you know. So uh, at, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's monitors and supplies and cages and, and everything mm -hmm. else. So um, yeah, boots and and all of the supporting products and merchandise that goes with it. Um, I mean, right now, I think that the hottest fucking thing in in our Reptile world is actually on the invert side. Right. Um, bugs and stuff are just bonkers right now. I mean, new companies popping up all the time. And the, like the isopods folks. Right. There's folks making a ton of money selling isopods. And it's I think it's fantastic because it it just develops another segment of our industry. Right. Um, right. And we just had, uh, you know, the Tinley Park show uh, just happened. And we were out there because we are the official shipper of uh, NARBC. Um, but I was able to get my FedEx rep to come out to the show and visit. Oh, really? Show. First time I've been able to get him to do it in 10 years because he was my rep at SYR as well. So he he came over and he he's the rep for Redline Shipping now. Oh, really? Right. I've been trying to get him there for forever because I want him to understand like what we do, who's involved. And frankly, I want you to respect the, the industry that we have right you know it's not it's not we're not in a fucking quonset hut walking on dirt and straw and looking at some shit ass animals the right. tinley park show is a is a big industry show it's a professional show and so he came and i mean he brought him and his wife he brought his wife and they were blown away i mean even after all this time working with literally uh a million packages at this point uh, through the, you know, through his account. Um, they just had no idea how big it was, how impressive it was. I got to introduce them to a lot of the the players and the breeders. Uh, I introduced them to Vin Russo and showed them, you know, his world-class boas. Uh, right. Got to see, you know, some of your favorite ball pythons at uh, Pytopia. Um, went, you know, showed Pangea, showed Triple L, showed Josh's frogs. We had a great conversation with Josh at Josh's Frogs, um, talking about how the industry has evolved and where it's going from here. Um, then we looked at, like I said, we looked at a bunch of the invert folks, all the different spider and uh, isopod sellers. And, you know, every time we turned around, it was like some other cool, crazy animal um, that just, they were just bugging out. It's just how diverse and huge. And then we couldn't even walk down the aisles half the time because it was so right. crowded. That was fantastic. Yeah, yeah Tinley was packed. packed. Yeah. Yeah, it was packed as always. Although I think Bob and Brian made the aisles uh, 10 inches narrower because it seemed tighter than ever. Well, um, yeah, I saw some pictures where there were only five feet in between tables. It was, you know, it was pretty snug. It was yeah. pretty, pretty <laughs> snug. I think we're at the capacity of that um, that building, that convention center. Right. So, yeah, because it opened up the whole thing this year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they still have to save a space for the auction, which is also standing room only. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's I think it's as big as it can be. Um, but I we got to pull out um, a giant uh, Lichianus from mm. uh, Steve Samelli, and uh, you know he's got some big adult leeches that are just impressive. They're impressive to me, and I've seen them a hundred fucking times, but they're super amazing and impressive for a member of the public, like my FedEx rep, to mm -hmm. 
to be right. able to let him hold that and then have it walk up his arm. His wife is taking pictures and, you know, then they get to touch it. And I mean, they were just blown away. Just a really, really deep appreciation for what we do and the, the then the money involved, you know, being able to show them a thirty thousand uh, dollar ball python or thirty thousand dollar crested gecko, which is friggin nuts. Yeah. Um, you know, ran him by Canova, of course, and, you know, introduced him to Justin and chatted him up for a second. And, you know, I got to brag on him a little bit. Like, you know, this guy is is king of the ball python world right now. Like this, he's a young, brilliant fucking entrepreneur. And he's built up this terrific little empire of his. Well, it's not really little anymore, but um, yeah, I just, I, I take a lot of pride in the industry and the hobby and what we've done, you know, over decades. So it was it was a really cool experience to be able to show that off to right. somebody that does have connections to us um, through FedEx, but just hasn't been able to see it before firsthand. It was it was neat to see, you know, to see that exposure for the first time. That was that was a great experience. Right. Well, well, you have <clears throat> excuse me, you have a history uh, of, you know, over what, 20 years in the business. Right. So. You uh, coming up on 30, actually. Coming up on 30. Okay. Yeah, no so man. everybody knows you to be this fucking nice, like a like I haven't heard anybody say a bad thing about yes, Robin Marklin. No, yes. no, I actually haven't. I heard some complainers, yeah. and th this is kind of going back to the the uh the positive support that you got. The the only negative complaints that i saw was why does robin get to skip the line and become the official morph market shipper okay yeah. um and you know part of the reason of course is you, you know john is a partner right mm -hmm. but what do you have to say to the people that are like how come nobody else got a chance to be the official shipper of morph market well, there was an official shipper, it was shipper reptiles, right. but you know, I mean, anybody has a has a chance. You can go talk yeah. to John and pitch your your idea, your product, your relationship. Um, you know, he recently partnered up with uh, RGI on the uh, genetics testing stuff. Right. So another new partnership for him. He's super super selective about it. Right. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I was just, I, I have a history of doing this business and I could show him uh, the team that we put together. I could show him the, the plan that we had and I convinced him of the potential of, of what we're doing, redline shipping. And I, you know, I convinced him we could execute at a very high level and that was enough to get it done. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I really I don't think that, you know, Bob Smith could walk in off the street and uh, take that spot with Morph Market. It's just not. Yeah. Yeah. Happen. Neither do I. You know, it's, and that's, not, that's not how it works. But any of the competitors could have, you know, theoretically pitched him on it and uh, tried to make it work. But uh, yeah. And it's not something I did in, in two weeks time. I mean, I've been, right. you know, I've been working at it for decades and, and right. that's the result of being consistent and being reliable and being predictable and executing uh, properly. So um, that had, that definitely had a lot to do with it. As far as, you know, enemies or people say bad shit. Um, I'm, I do pretty well these days. Um, I really enjoy the relationships I have in the industry. So, and, and I'm older and wiser, so I don't really have time for negative nonsense and, negativity and gossip and shit. But if you take it back to the nineties or early two thousands, when we were doing livestock, like we were breeding, right. animals, it was a much more competitive time then. And you could, oh, yeah. people that would, uh, would have said negative stuff about what we were doing or, you know, me personally, I right. suppose. but well, I mean, I've never been a combative type of type of person. So I think, well, well, and, and let's be clear here. I mean, John is fucking, it, John is not a dumb guy. You, you know, John is very fucking smart, you know? Um, and John is going to do what's best for the morph market customers, right? So do, do you think that John wants to piss off 
fucking 15,000 people by just aligning himself with somebody who might do a good job. Right. You know, John is going to fucking align himself with a solid, confident fucking dude who is going to, and a solid, confident company that's going to make shit easier for the people of Morph Market, you know? Yeah. So I, I didn't understand the, uh, the, the negative comments because let, let's be clear here. Redline's goal is not to destroy every other fucking shipping company on the planet, right? No. Redline's goal is to do the best at what they do for for the clients, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just execute so, execute at a very high level for ourselves. That's what right. I want. To do. Right. Well, and one thing I'm curious about Redline, like if you get a shipment to a state where that particular animal is illegal. Mm -hmm. Do you guys decline the shipment? Like, do you have checks in point that do that? Or like, how does that work? That's a, that's difficult. It's difficult to stop that. Um, you try and combat that through um, education. Right. Okay. We did, uh, I, I'm trying to, I feel like you've uh, maybe have some back door hack into my admin because we had an issue like that uh, a week and a half ago. Oh, oh, okay. And I, Wait, I, I don't have a backdoor hack into anything. About this right. thing. So we had somebody in Florida receive what turned out to be an illegal species. Right. And so they wanted to turn around and return it back to the sender because they realized they weren't allowed to have it. But it wasn't a Burmese and it wasn't a retic. But it was, it was another animal that was not allowed in Florida. Right. And so we facilitated the return back out of Florida for that animal. Um, so I appreciated the concern of that customer there. Right. But um, there's not there's not a lot you can do if somebody wants to be malicious. Right. Right. You know, the best you can do is is um, educate folks on what proper shipping is now. Thank goodness in my uh, over 10 years in the shipping business, we've never had a hot snake in the in the system. OK, you know, nobody's ever shipped a rattlesnake or a cobra or anything like that. And thank goodness. And is that a hard and fast rule that you that's guys a, just that's know hard, ship? hard, hard. That's a rock okay. hard. OK, <laughs> yes, that would that would be bad for everybody. Right. Which is also part of the education in, on shipping. Like, you know, it's not just about what you want to do and ship and, and just, you know, do your own thing. What you do really can affect everybody else in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you get some ding dong that's that's going to ship poorly or uh, ship dangerously, um, that affects everybody else in the industry. So that's always a main concern of mine. Right. We've had some wacky shit in my SYR days. Um, I remember once somebody shipped a blood python in a banana box. Okay. Like a banana box from the grocery store. Like it's a wax cardboard box <laughs> and it has holes in it. Right. And they could look in the box and see the snake. Oh, God. Not even in a bag. No. No. Now, it, I, I don't believe it made it into the system. I think he dropped it off and they were like, what the fuck right. is this? And yeah, so because in, in New York, you, you can't have a retic or a berm. Right. And um, I, I know people that are, you know, wood shipped to New York. And I know people that have berms and, you know, retics mm -hmm. in New York. Um, so I, I, w I was just curious about that because usually... You know what they'll do uh, uh, is ship something to Jersey or ship something to Pennsylvania, yeah. and the person from New York would just drive down and pick it up. And uh, but but that still, you know, puts a lot of the hobby in a negative light because I, I got, you know, I, I I'm not going to call them friends, but I have acquaintances that I know have, you know, eleven berms and four retics in their fucking apartment, <laughs> you know, so. I'm like, how'd you even get that here? And they were like, FedEx, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> sure. Now, yeah. we, you know, and we stress the importance of, uh, and SYR does as well, and um, the importance of labeling the package with lacy labeling for, you know, right. transport, and you're supposed to put the species 
a scientific name, common name. That's really important. That's all pre-printed on our packaging, uh, you know, our shipping boxes and stuff. So we want people to label it properly. Um, when you ship into New York, you ship into Florida, you ship into California, they're becoming more and more stringent about inspecting the packages. Right. So if you try and get away with some bullshit, um, it's a very high likelihood at this point you're going to get caught with it. Right. And they don't play around. You know, they threaten you with fucking $10,000 fines and $30,000 fines. And, and you know, it gets pretty extreme. So, and I know, I have, I do know there are some well-known folks in the industry who I'm definitely not going to name, but um, they're, they're hung up right now um, on uh, illegal species transport and, you know, are actually in jail and t- facing some serious uh, penalties and consequences. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's it's no bullshit. Now, the, the question is, the, the popular question always is, if you get that um, knucklehead that insists on shipping poorly, whether he's not going to use proper packaging or they're going to try and ship a berm to Florida, which is the worst fucking idea, because Florida is going to inspect every fucking package that comes right. in. Right. But so the question is, do you ban, ban him from the site? Like, do you ban him from using the service because he's reckless? Or do you just have a sit down and talk with him and say, look, you can't do it this way. I want to support your shipping. I want to support your business, but I need you to do it properly. I need you to use the right packaging. I need you to use the right labeling. And you can't ship berms to Florida. God damn it. Right. Like I would rather they execute properly with my support and we get them on the right path. Right. Then to say, you know, piss off, I cancel your account, go ship however you want to ship, use another competitor and, you know, blow up their shit or just do it on your own crazy style. I don't want that because that's still going to negatively impact the industry. And I think that's right. still bad for everybody. So in most cases, I mean, unless they're just a straight up fucking crook, which also exists in our industry, believe it or not. Quite a bit. Um, yeah. I'd rather try and educate them and get them to do it the right way because that's right. in everybody's best interest. Right. I mean, Phil at US Arc, he's got enough bullshit on his plate. He shouldn't have to worry about reckless people just endangering our, our very industry just because they're fucking lazy. Right. Yeah. Creating more problems than they solve. You, you know, yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's the other thing. You guys are a big supporter of US Arc, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And um it it's it, it's probably one of the 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 more endearing ways to to other client, you know, to clients uh by being such a big supporter. You know, I mean, you may have people that use you simply because of your vocal uh in favor of U.S. Arc thing, you know, not even knowing about the shipping end of it. Now, um, you guys do, you, you guys provide all the, you know, the boxes and the packaging and all that also, right? Yeah, insulated boxes, bags, heat packs. Right. Uh, we have we have our own branded face packs now um, for the folks that like to use face packs, which I think are a, a really great tool. Right. Um, so we, have, we came out with that, but... Um, yeah, we have everything you, you need to to do it properly. Okay, so so it's like a uh, they could buy all all the stuff they need on the Redline Shipping website, mm-hmm. you know, as opposed to uh, like who who used to do a lot of the box, like TSK and all that. They used to do the boxes. The TSK um, still sells packaging and stuff. Yeah, let me yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I know they still do, there. but I mean, of of course, you know. I mean, the want probably is for them to buy everything from you from A to Z, you, you know, so that that would be the the want of any smart business guy. That would give me confidence that folks are executing properly. Yes. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Now, some people do their own packaging, which is fine, as long as it meets the standard that's required, you know, three quarter right. insulation and a certain strength and burst weight. And funny enough that you mentioned packaging, I saw a video earlier today, uh, Instagram maybe, but somebody had received um, a box from Reach Out Reptiles from Garrett. Mm. And he does his own packaging. Right. And his box was fucking dope. 
It was so nice. I want to order something from him just so I can get his box. I mean, it was branded <laughs> nice. It was a white box, but it was branded reach out on all sides. But it was, I think it's one of the, I don't know if he gets it from Uline, but Uline has a, has a series of boxes called the, um, I think they're called Indestructible. Right. And so his is the Indestructible style. And I mean, it, the lady was opening it, the, the breeder that received the animals, she was opening it. And the box just, I mean, I don't know. Nobody's going to care about what a box looks like, I guess, except for box nerds like me. But the box <laughs> looked fucking awesome. The branding looked awesome. The packaging on the interior, like the, the packing material and stuff, looked super pro. I mean, I just, I love seeing that stuff because I love to see people be masters of what their craft is. Right. Like, you know, whatever your job is, you should try and be a master of that job. And Garrett is selling animals to people and shipping them to people. And he, he's, he's got that shit mastered. It looked like a million fucking dollars. Right. Um, so you can use your own boxes. And some people do. You know, some people use shitty boxes for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. But people like Garrett... Um, that are going to execute at that very high level. John Dagg at JD Constriction, you know, he uses a, a really nice box, but he uses branded tape for the right. product that says JD Constriction on it. Like, I mean, that makes sense to me. If you're going to sell a product to a customer and they're going to receive it, and they're, they're already going to be stoked about receiving the, the animal, um, like, why not make your pr pr presentation pro? Like, oh, right. They, exactly. Three bucks. That's well, part of the experience. I wish more people would understand that. Like that's part of the experience is is getting that type of a, a, a presentation and that type of uh, like materials inside the box, whether it's feeding cards, tracking cards, receipts, genetics, papers, whatever it is, stickers and decals for your company. Um, when you buy packaging from Redline Shipping, whether it's case of boxes or heat packs or reptile bags, we include free product from Redline Science in the box. Oh, okay. You get free swag, which is the actual product that costs money in stores. Right. You put that in the in the packaging when you when you get a packaging order from Redline, because that's part of the that's part of that thing. I want people when they open up the packaging to be like, oh shit, right stuff. Right, right, exactly. I can use. Well, so it, it's free, funny. But... Yeah, you get a free shit scraper, Chris. Right. That see, that's awesome. That's not what it's called. <laughs> if that's just what it does. All right, tell everybody what it's called. Well, it's called blade scraper. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So you, you know can see you is, can see how off I was with that. Then yeah, super far off. <laughs> um, what just makes it sound so crude? I use <laughs> I use the blade scrapers in my kitchen and on the oven, and I keep them in my toolbox. I use them in the RV, um, not the ones that I you know would scrape shit with, but their own separate ones. But. Um, this cool trend that I'm seeing now uh, is on Instagram, people are tagging us when they get their packaging supplies. Like they open the box and there's free product in there and they're taking pictures and putting it on Instagram and tagging us. And I've never had that experience before. Right. Nobody's ever been right. excited to get a, a case of 776 boxes. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but now they are. And so I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I, I just thought it was a cool effect to be able to, to throw free product in there. That people could get whether it's hemostats or you know tweezers or, or the blade scraper um so yeah just to be able to see like people are actually interested enough to post it on instagram that's cool and garrett he got that post on instagram because of that presentation right this box right. Box so fucking good the recipient was like i'm gonna do a video of this so, oh yeah super yeah smart. It, marketing super smart it's Brand so funny that you you refer to yourself as a box nerd because uh, I'm a, a creative director at my day job, mm -hmm. and our, our new uh, boxes, you know, had to be designed and had to be you, you know rolled in, yeah. and uh, we're using uh, the the wet tape. We had to design our own wet tape, right? And um, I, I was looking up dispensers on the wet tape. And I was just like, 600 bucks for a fucking tape dispenser? Like, this is insane, <laughs> right? We got to buy 13 of them. And, uh, yeah. But the difference 
that the packaging makes as, as opposed to just a shitty white box uh, is probably improved sales by like, you know, 15, 20 percent just because people are thrilled to get the boxes now. Right. So I, I, I get where you're coming from with that. I think it's so, important. I think I think your presentation is important, whether it's you shipping the animals or whether it's you at a trade show, whether it's a small right. local show, whether it's Tinley Park or Arlington or Pomona Super Show. Like the way you present yourself to your customers, it speaks volumes. Yeah. That, that, like why wouldn't you want to be as pro as you can be, as right. present the best possible version of yourself, your product, your merchandise, your animals, whatever it is, like invest time and energy into presentation to say, this is why it's worthwhile to buy from me or to do business with me. Right. I think because people we pay attention, attention to the little things. Yeah, yeah, you know, That's just so, that makes a difference. Yeah, fake it till you make it, right? Like, just fucking do everything you have to do to make you look like a million dollar company, even if you're not, right? So, yeah. please excuse this brief interruption for a word from one of our sponsors. How fucking thrilled am I to have Focus Cubed Habitats joining the snakes in the Fat Man family? They are literally the best display cages that I've ever owned. I, I, I was a fan of this husband and wife team of builders from when they were putting out these amazing pieces of fucking art from their garage. Steven and Ashley have been keeping reptiles for years and as experienced keepers, they understand how important your animals are in your life. Focus Cubed Habitats provide security and comfort for your animals while maintaining these insane, badass designs that everyone can appreciate. They give you the opportunity to make their home part of your home. You want options? They've got options. Every Focus Cubed Habitat is custom made to your specs, and you could choose from hundreds of options on their website. Too many options? Ashley and Steven have a huge selection of blog style articles and complete accessory fact pages on their website to help educate consumers about add-ons that will best fit their individual needs. Listen, at the end of the day, these fucking cages are showpieces. Every cage their focus builds will be the centerpiece of your reptile room. Hell, they could be the centerpiece of your fucking living room. If you have reptiles that you want to display, Look no further than Focus Cubed Habitats. You can follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and even fucking TikTok. Or just go old school and, and go right to FocusCubedHabitats.com and tell them that the fat man told you to drop them a line. Now, you guys also ship, you look like, I'll be honest, you're the official shipper here, but it probably doesn't mean all that much because I don't ship many animals out. However, I do ship out shit every day, non-animal wise. Yeah. And you guys basically do that too, right? Like if I wanted to ship, you know, 20 of, uh, let's say if I wanted to ship, you know, 10 of those tape dispensers down to Virginia. You guys could do that for me, right? You're trying to get me in trouble now, Chris. No, what, why? Are you not allowed to do that? Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, you could do that once. Okay. Right. But officially, no, I don't solicit that kind of business. Yes, okay. you can ship merchandise and dry goods and, and your personal stuff with Redline shipping. Yes. Okay. But I don't go after the tape dispenser business. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't. I didn't mean that. I, I, I meant if I just had things that I had yeah. to ship. Right. You yeah. know, you That's you guys right. obviously do all that too. But like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't chase uh, business or accounts for people that manufacture picture frames, right? Or right. shoes, right? Because um, our focus with FedEx is required. Our focus is reptiles, aquatics, and inverts. And then okay. all of the merchandise and dry goods that, that supports that. I, I was going to say, wouldn't that include everything else? Yeah. 
You, you know, so if I had to ship out 35 snakes in a fat man shirts, that I counts. could use, you know, Redline. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, all right. Now, how do, um, how do, I mean, everybody knows right now. I mean, I, I, I saw fucking an army of fucking red shirts at Arlington. That was crazy, wasn't it? Everybody, <laughs> like, it. it was it was insane, man. Loved it. Yeah, fucking. Um, what what are things right now that you hope to do in a year that you aren't doing right now? What's the ambition a year from now? Um, what can I share? Really, some is top secret. Got stuff behind the scenes going on, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'll have to talk to you about that after. <coughs> But, um, you know, we want to get deeper penetration in the aquatics market. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we did, SYR does pretty well in the aquatics world for coral and, and fish uh, shippers. And so I want to get deeper penetration there. I've got a lot of great relationships in that world. But frankly, it's been so friggin' busy in the reptile side that uh, I just haven't had a chance to really uh, focus. So I want to I want to be able to pivot to that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, include those folks in this adventure as well. Um, I think that the invert side of the business is going to keep exploding. Uh, you know, the, the isopod folks, uh, the bioactive bug side of the world. Right. Um, and, all, you know, all the, the, the tarantula and spider and scorpion type folks. Um, that is, is probably the hottest point part of the market right now. And so I want to keep um, servicing those folks and and reach out to them and start making relationships deeper in that community as well. Right. And I've already started that. And and uh, that's super interesting. I find those animals super fascinating. But just the idea that like on the isopod thing, number one, it's ridiculous. It, it really is. Over the last pill two bugs. years, three years. Yeah. yeah. They're pill bugs that live in dirt. Right. And now it's it's a multi multi million dollar business. Like I would not have foreseen that five years ago. Right. Um, there are a lot of new companies doing it. I, I've you know, you go to any show at this point and you see bug folks. Um, gosh, I was at uh, a Colorado, a Denver show this past weekend. And was it rubber ducky isopods? Had a big fucking end cap of isopods and substrates and foods and and kind of all the supporting product around that whole bioactive you know uh, terrarium substrate world and some great signage some great logos some great graphics and i chatted them up they, you know it's a husband and wife team um and they had pretty much started during covid and the shit just exploded and i was i'm so happy for them that's right. fantastic. Um, uh, ben at uh, ispod.com is doing crazy business selling pill bugs, pill bugs from yeah. all over the world, which I suppose is kind of like ball python morphs. Like there's a million different things and I don't know any of them. Yeah. Roly polies basically. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but they, I mean, there's, there's, you know, a, a species from all different continents. There are us species. They come in different colors. Um, different sizes, apparently. Um, but that whole movement is, is really fascinating to me. And I want to, I want to better understand it. And I, I want to service the shipping side of it as well. Um, and guys, I, I've, I've known, uh, guys like Josh at, uh, BioDude for a number of years since he first started, but guys like that, that are kind of pioneering that whole segment of, of the bioactive substrate and, you know, running with, uh, live soils like living soils and leaf substrates and and the balances and bio shots that go into the substrates and and uh all of the supporting product it, it just blows my mind what they're doing and what's great i think is it's moving towards what we used to call more a european style of keeping of the animals where it's more of a naturalistic setup you know right like people are moving away from the newspaper tub setup or right. a Santa chips tub set up and they're moving into more naturalistic vivariums, uh, terrariums, paludariums. 
I believe is one of the words for the water type stuff. Right. And I think that's all super positive. Um, it's great for the animals. It's more enriching for the animals. Um, the, the, the setups themselves are fascinating. A, a bio dude who's uh, he's down in the Houston uh, area. He had had, when I went and visited him, God, was, uh, I think it was COVID times, two, two, three years ago. He had one setup that was like seven years old or something. That he's never cleaned. Right. right. You know, just a soil that was naturally living and existing. And he had all the different bugs and, and, and inverts in there that would eat the fecal matter and the material and the decaying matter. And it just kind of is its own little life cycle. And I thought, holy shit, that's fucking really fascinating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I had tried to set up a bioactive cage here. My, my main, res, you know, reservation was uh, I just didn't want to become one of the bug people, right? Like, like I didn't want to bring bugs into my house. I okay. certainly didn't want to pay $20 a bug for a basic fucking bug that's going to eat shit because that's really, at the end of the day, they're all shit eaters, right? And um, Shit eaters, I, shit scrapers, it's all shit related, bud. It's all shit related, right. I, I I tried to set one up and uh, I, I just couldn't do it. So fucking it I failed miserably. Uh, flies ended up going, you know, getting everywhere. I ended up just cleaning the cage out, and now I clean the cage every fucking week. Yeah. And I fucking hate it. I have one cage in my house to clean, and every time I clean it, I'm like, you know what? I really fuck these frogs. Maybe I should just flush them down the toilet. Like this is a lot of work, right? And, yeah. and then I talk to guys that that are like, yeah, Monday through Thursday, I'm fucking cleaning cages and, you know, doing that after my regular job. And I, I would like to make the attempt at a bioactive uh, bioactive cage again. But um, I, I just don't know, man. I, you know, but but I, I could see where the money is in that, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were talking about Mike Wilbanks before. And he he has a whole section of his shop dedicated to bioactive stuff, yeah. and I think that that's uh, you, you know once the bigger guys are doing it, th that's you, you know that's who you need to kind of uh, grow the um, that particular segment uh, of the the hobby, right? So fucking you know just because you know Joe Bob Davies in fucking his mom's basement in Alabama is setting up a bioactive cage. That that really doesn't encourage me to set up a bioactive cage. Seeing some somebody like Mike mm -hmm. doing it and the bio dude and you, you know them doing it right, yeah, that Lots makes me want to go is, out. Is big into it. Pangea is getting big into it. I mean, you know, all of these movers and shakers are moving in that direction. So, right, it tells you that it's it's here to stay, and it's I mean it's it's not just growing; it's exponentially growing. Right. Well, uh, and. So, and, and I mean, it's even growing on Morph Market. Doesn't Morph Market have a segment, a section for uh, inverts and isopods now? They do. But yeah. six months from now, it's going to be different. Because right. right now, the inverts are a subset of a different uh, group. And I'm trying to remember what. They don't have their own classification, their own section on Morph Market. It's a, it's a subgroup. But six right. months from now, inverts will be its own group on Morph Market. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and get John to add a segment called Shit Eaters. Overpriced Shit Eaters. That will be the <laughs> kicker. That'll be what makes him do it. Yes. <laughs> That'll be it. Now, uh, you know what? Um, I met with uh, Lauren from Triple L at uh, Tinley. We were talking about this invert uh, side of the world and how big it is. And he said that um, the next huge thing out there is going to be ants. Ants are the next big fucking movement. Ants, huh? Ants uh -huh. are coming very, very strong. And um, I just I went to the Animal Con event in uh, August, and uh, the guy from Ants Canada was there, right? And giving talks, and he has a gigantic YouTube channel all about ants, all different species, keeping them. And uh, his business, they sell ants and all the supporting, you know, uh, substrates and foods and set up merchandise for it. But uh, apparently that is like the, the cutting edge of, of animal keeping. It's not really, you know, it's not the reptile segment, but 
it's kind of in our world. You know, there's right, a thousand right. amphibians, we've got snakes, we've got lizards, chameleons, geckos, um, cockroaches and crickets and um, isopods and the rest of the inverts and ants are, they're close enough. Right. Um, I'm not going to keep ants. I've, I've kept them in the past. They're interesting, but like, I'm not trying to get into them, but I can recognize that it's coming and it's going to come right. big. Yeah. I'm shocked at how big the bug section has become in the last two or three years you know so yeah. uh but like almost to the point where like i don't even believe it i i i kind of feel like somebody's behind it right like it just seems like an evil plan to fucking insert shit eating bugs into everybody's house you, you know in the country because mm-hmm. i would say probably 70 percent of the ball python people that i know uh also have bioactive setups in their house so it, it it's caught on, man. I'm surprised at how big it's caught on. Would you would you shed a tear if if the invert industry displaced ball pythons? Would I shed a tear? I don't give a fuck. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's your favorite species. So yeah. No, no, it's really not. You know, like I don't have one ball python in my house anymore. I know. So I, know. I got two frogs, and I'm getting a green tree and a euro, and um. You're a master? Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Now you're talking. I'm just tired of keeping animals in a draw, you know? Mm-hmm. And th- th- that part is like, that That doesn't even seem appealing to me anymore, you know? So, what, what, are you just getting a single Euromastix? I'm just focused. Yeah, I'm just getting that. a single Euromastix, a single skink, and a single green tree. I got two frogs here, Australian dumpy frogs, that uh, the only reason I have two is because. Um, What's his name over at um, a tree frog collective just gave me a free one also. Spencer. Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got crazy frogs. Dude, he's opening a new shop now, too. And it's yeah. fucking nuts, man. I mean, well, he's got and he's expanding to other stuff. Like he sends me for the reptile report. He sends me pictures of these fucking just bonkers leopard geckos that he's bringing in. Right. And working with and then bearded dragons that are out of this world like yeah. intense dark colors and stuff super red stuff yeah spencer's doing some crazy shit and then of course his frogs the frog stuff he sends me i sometimes doubt if it's even real like it's so intense looking and the colors right. are so bizarre and so unfamiliar to me i'm sometimes i wonder if he's goofing on me but they're all real things so yeah spencer's yeah. doing some crazy things uh tree frog collective yeah um, big fan of it and- and you, yeah, yeah, so am I. And the dude is such a fucking nice guy. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I really like Spencer. Um, you see, he got you, uh, a dog tried to eat him a year or two ago. No shit, you know really? That? Yeah. No, he, I didn't know that. Oh, my God. He got put in the hospital. He was sending me those pictures, too. It was fucking nuts. Big holes in his, uh, was it his leg or his arm? Yeah, he got attacked by a fucking big-ass mean dog. Ugh. Um, so you know somebody's out there trying to stop all his good frog frog work, right? Yeah, <laughs> putting the attack dogs on him. Well, you, you had mentioned also uh, uh, the reptile report. You're, you're still yep. doing that too, right? Yeah, that that is my uh, my thing. It was a, a joint company with my former partner, but when we uh, split up, uh, you know, he kept uh, SYR and I kept the reptile report. And so I have a, a you know a couple small staff that uh, that basically make it happen for me, um, but I still submit photos and videos and stuff all the time. Yeah. That I dude, I, and, your, and, your and Instagram it. feed on the reptile report is fucking incredible. Like I find myself just fucking double clicking on every fucking picture that that you guys submit so, nice, or nice. That, that you guys put out. So it does I've, it does really well. We're up to a million people on Facebook, a million likes and follows. That's a pretty cool number. And uh, Instagram, I really just started working on it. And by I started working, I mean my staff really is the ones that do it um, in 2019. Um, but it's growing fast as well. And yeah, I, I mean, I dig it. It comes across my own personal feed all the time. And I find myself liking my, you know, reptile report stuff. Your own pictures. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. The, the problem is, I mean, the original idea for reptile report was to, be able to shine a bigger spotlight on on folks doing great work with really cool animals that weren't able to 
reach a big audience by, on their own, right? So oh, yeah. We, we show yeah, up the first audience. But at this point, I mean, we're posting 15 to 18 posts every single day. Right. It's There's probably 75 pictures and videos that don't make it every single day. Right. You, get, you know, just a ton of shit submitted. And so it, it's become challenging to uh, be able to share all the cool stuff that we get. Um, but, you know, we do our best. And But, it, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the cut point it gets more and more um, difficult to reach because the quality of, of pictures and videos and animals that people submitting are just like bonkers. Like, you know, Spencer sending in some crazy picture of a bearded dragon or, or frog or something. Most of the time his stuff will make the cut, but sometimes even his stuff doesn't make it because there's right. there's, there's just so many I, other great uh, animals to share. So um, I, I love the the idea of, of what the Reptile Report does, and um, it is uh, officially 10 years old now. So, yeah. Time well, I remember the first time we made uh, a picture on the Reptile Report. I mean, yeah. we, thought, we thought that we've arrived, you know, like fucking... You know, we got our picture on the reptile report, and um, it, you know, it's kind of like a uh, a milestone. It's like when you, you know, when a new breeder sells a snake to Justin, like like when we do that, right? You, sure. you know, it, it's it's it, you know, it's incredible. You guys used to have the reptile report awards, right? Yes. And you guys don't do that anymore, right? No. Was there a lot of shit involved with that? Yes. <laughs> Are you surprised? No, um, I'm de I'm definitely not. <laughs> definitely not surprised. That's a love hate relationship. We used to have the best of awards, right? And we ran it for four or five years. We did trophies and everything. Again, I thought, what a great way to recognize great folks doing great work, which is a kind of an underlying philosophy of of how I approach a lot of my reptile world, my career, supporting great folks doing great work. Love it. How can you not want to do that? But it turns out there's a lot of petty folks and jealous folks and envious folks. And so if you say, you know, hey, uh, podcast of the year is going to go to Chris Eaton. Uh, that's never happened. And but you get six other podcasters that most of the time you've never heard of that want to talk shit and be like, Chris is a fucking asshole. Yes. I hate his hat. Right. Um, my show's better. Uh, you're a bunch of fucking dickheads for supporting him. <laughs> you know that he once uh, said the c word on his on his podcast, and so he doesn't deserve to be there. Or I once heard that he kicked a bag of puppies, or <laughs> like whatever nonsense they come up with. It just became so petty and so angry. All, all, all true, by the way. I mean, the dogs were just getting too loud. You know, so fucking. <laughs> you kicked him and then threw him in the river. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. had had to had to put my dog to sleep about a month ago, and oh. uh, wasn't anything wrong with her. I just I, I'm just very busy, you know. So fucking just, just had to do it. Turns out I really shouldn't have announced that online, you know. So okay, uh, well you're not winning the podcast of the year award, this year, <laughs> and that's why. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it just became it became tough, like. The positive feedback from the people that participated and won awards or even, you know, were nominated for awards, that was fantastic and, and right. very rewarding. Yeah, that was a big thing, man. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's like everything. Like, the, you know, the 5% of shit people can ruin it for everybody else. Oh, oh please. You're, you're talking, you know, you're preaching to the choir, man. Yeah. You know. So, and then in order to do the awards, it took probably two months. And it was, um, I think, 200 hours, 200 hours of labor for a staffer to do it. Right. And so it was a ton of work. And, yeah, after a while, the negativity just wore on us. Right. Yeah, I bet. And, you know, we've never done, like, um, paid posts type of stuff. I mean, once in a while, we'll do a paid post, and it, <laughs> it costs, like, 30 bucks if somebody wants to promote their reptile show that's coming up or something right but like to to you want to you want me to post your frog or your bearded dragon or something that's it's always free 
Right. You just right. send it in, and if it makes the cut, submit it. Yeah. Free. But yeah, people had these grand conspiracies like you only post the people that pay you. You're only in it for the money, and you're just greedy motherfuckers. And that's the only people that win the awards. And I mean, I argued against it for a while, but you just get exhausted. But like, never took a fucking nickel for that shit. Right. Right. And and during the best of awards years. We lost tens of thousands of dollars a year running the site in the business. Oh, I bet. Yeah. But I thought it was so important that it was worthwhile. And right. we had a successful business in shipping that we were able to absorb that loss. Right. And so it didn't hurt that bad. And I thought it was important enough to the industry to be able to share all these pictures and stuff for folks. And then to be able to recognize great people doing great work with the awards and trophies and stuff. But yeah, I mean, just, it, man, it just fucking wears on you, people that just have to be negative about it. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. But so yeah, me. we stopped. And and every, I mean, you know, every couple months, somebody asked me about, you know, best of awards. You can start it up again. You want to, you know, please do it again. Um, and I say, no, no, it's not going to happen. Um, and then once in a while, I'll go to a show or I'll go, I'll see something online and somebody still has like their, their trophy up for winning, right? you know, uh, best lizard picture or best lizard breeder or, you know, snake breeder of the year or whatever it was. Um, so that's, you know, that's still really cool. I, I love to see that. Um, but yeah, we it's just, it's not going to happen again unless you want yeah. to see it. I mean, I consider if you want to. No, see no, no, I don't believe me. I, I get 12 emails a week telling me to go kill myself. All right. I don't need any more. You know, it's uh, probably because of that puppy thing. No, nah, it, it is. Well, what I just tell them is like, uh, cool. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, fuck you. I sell a lot of shirts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'm, I'm just happy with that. You, so, hey, man, you got to you gotta try and let it roll off your back, right? So you can just keep rolling forward. But I mean, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's really well, hard. Well, the, the older I get, the more I'm mm -hmm. just like, ah, fuck them. You know, like it used to be if anybody said, a negative thing about me, yeah, I would indirectly mention them on the next show or fucking rip on them back online. Uh, and now I'm just like, fuck it, you, you know, just, uh, you know, but, but that comes with, uh, I mean, I, I haven't been around for as long as you, but I've been around, I've been doing this for six years now. And it's just like the things that bothered me when I first started just do not bother me at all anymore. I don't give a fuck. I realize that it doesn't matter. And I realized that, according to my numbers, they're probably listening anyway. Okay, so it, you know, there's no point in starting up a a big thing now. Now, if you know, I do a hot chick episode every year, mm -hmm. and a lot of people give the girls a hard time for doing it. They're saying, you know, you're going on this misogynistic show with this this asshole. Um, that I get offended at because they start ripping on the people that are my guest on the show, oh, yeah, you, you know, yeah, and, and believe it or not, it's more women that complain about that than men. I, I never knew I had so many women listeners, um, until they tried to shut me down a year ago, you know? So, um, it's, you know, and a lot of people came to my support, you know, and, um, and I should have known because I got hot women taking pictures in my shirt and sending me pictures like literally every day I'm getting new pictures. So I, I knew I had a strong women base, but I didn't know it was as strong as, you know, as it was. You, you know, one femme Nazi group tried to shut me down on Instagram and Instagram investigated both of our pages mm -hmm. and they ended up shutting down the femme Nazi group because they said, you guys are way more sexist than this guy. And they shut down their page. And, and I consider that a small victory, you know? Yeah. So, um, some, you know what, Chris? Some people just live to be negative. And I don't get yeah. that because it's not fucking healthy. Um, but some people well, yeah, just love to be negative. And, and I, at this point, yeah, as you get older, you kind of, your edges soften and you get, you know. Right. You let well, well pass. And, no, and the whole point important. is to really. Like you said, shine a light on the good people of the industry, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm stop being that. so negative. But like one thing in our last conversation when you were on, I was ripping on Emily and Ed from Snake Discovery, right? I remember and, that. Yeah. and since 
I, I mean, since you fucking just, you just kind of convinced me to, to wa- watch them, and I fucking love them. I'm subscribed. I fucking watch every video they put out. They're, they're fucking awesome people. Um, I'm so, glad yeah, yeah, I, I really, um, I mean, they're really like just good people in general, you know? And, and I heard there was a line around the corner just to meet them at Tinley. Uh, so yes, yes. It, it's just Every like, show. yeah, it, it's insane how popular they are. And, and, you know, from after yeah. watching fucking 200 videos from them would good reason, you know? So, yeah, I mean, they, so well, I, they're, I may they're have great at what they do. They're passionate about what they do and they're executing at a very high level. But um, the, there's also an element of genius in there. Like their marketing yeah. is uh, unique in the industry. Nobody else has done what they've done in such a short time. So right. At the, at the Tinley show just a couple of weeks ago, Emily always does a promotion for the show, some kind of participation thing. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what the promotion was. I didn't see it in advance. But I did notice there's a lot of Where's Waldo people walking around wearing the right. Where's Waldo outfits. Hmm. And after I saw the seventh or eighth person out of dozens and dozens that were there, I thought, well, there's Emily's promotion. I don't have right. to, I don't have to, to look it up at her or anything. There's only r- one reason why this room is filled with Where's Waldo right? or filled with people in onesies or filled with people in crazy hats. And that's Emily. Right. Emily and Ed are doing a promotion. You dress up as Waldo and you get some kind of perk or bonus or, you know, meet and greet or or just being a part of the group. And the participation they get is bonkers. Yeah. I mean, fantastic. Good for them. Yeah. yeah. The, the funny thing about them is I, I didn't appreciate the. Um, they. They go after the, the kids, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and yeah. I was never in that world. Like fucking, like a kid came up to me one time, like eleven years old, and he was like, "I listen to your show all the time. I fucking love you." I'm like, "Dude, you got a shitty father. Stop listening to my show. You, you know, what you should not crazy. be letting letting you listen to my show." Um, but but that kid market, you, you know, and some of the pet tubers, um, I, I tend to like a little bit more now. I mean, some of them I just fucking hate and think they're ridiculous, but fucking, yeah. you know, the ones like Emily and Ed and fucking, you know, th- those type of guys, I really, my, my respect for, for them has grown ever since our conversation. Because awesome. I'm like, Robin's kind of cool. Maybe I should give these guys a chance, yeah, you know? And, and I did, and fucking, I, I watch every fucking video like a fucking 12-year-old idiot over here just fucking watching every video, so... If I knew that was the case, if you would have mentioned that to me before when we're leading up to the show, I would have sent you a Where's Waldo outfit so you could really participate. I would not do that, though. No. What? Believe me, this stupid hat is enough, right? So fucking. But if I send you the shirt, the Where's Waldo shirt, you just take a picture and then you insert it into the video. Like right now, three, two, one, there's the picture. Not going to do it, Rob. Right. (laughs) Just can't do it. So you love Emily I'm a Where's Waldo camera. shirt. I look like a fat yeah. Freddy Krueger. Okay. There's Just nothing me. wrong with that. <laughs> then I'll get fat shamed. You no, know. I think, oh man, I, it would be so brilliant. What about a onesie? You down for that? No, I'm not. Um, I'm Try I'm it. down for a chick wearing a onesie. I could fucking put a chick right next to me here wearing a onesie the whole time, and me just telling her, "Shut up, don't talk, just look good." And uh, you know, have that in the armor. thing, yeah. So that that I might consider. I know exactly the girl to, to do it too. You know, with too. So uh, we we could probably work that. You know what? Send the fucker wears Waldo shirt. I'll have her wear it, right? No, I'm so, sending a double XL for you. you no, nah, you can't be doing that. Fucking ah, you know what? Fucking do it. Be so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Robin, fucking. Tell people how they could get in touch with Redline. You can go to the site, redlineshipping.com, and uh, you register an account. It only takes a second. Uh, we have great discounts on shipping. That's what we do. 
but if you have a custom discount, one of the competitors, which everybody does, that's fine. I'm happy to take a look at that and give people a, a custom discount that'll work for them. Uh, win over their business and their support. So redlineshipping.com. You can also find us redlinescience.com for our line of products, stainless steel, uh, biotope cages, uh, the notorious shit scrapers, which are fantastic. Uh, Reptile yeah, Report, yeah. Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there as well. Um, I'll be doing all the NARBC shows. You can come see us at the show. You can get free uh, Redline Shipping shirts at the show if you wear it at the show. That's a pretty cool promo. That's why there was a billion shirts on the Arlington yeah, floor. Geez, were there. Was, they were like everywhere. Red Army, yeah. Yeah, it was like I was Emily doing a promotion. Yeah, yeah right. It, it was fucking awesome. Funny yeah. story is Robin was at Arlington. I literally didn't even know he was there. Yes, we did not. Uh, we mm. did not encounter each other. No, we did not. Yeah. So it was disappointing. Um, but next, it time was. I'll but I'll be sure. I'll be back there in February. So I will be there as well. And so okay. we'll uh, we'll do some uh, selfies. Yeah, we'll do some selfies like you did with uh, Megan behind the go. table. Okay, so we'll fucking take care of that. Yeah. But uh, Robin. Thank you so much for fucking taking the time, man. I, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me back uh, on. Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate you supporting the show. I appreciate you coming on and talking about Redline. And uh, again, Redline Science, the official shipping company of Snakes and the Fat Man. Close. So I am Redline following shipping. Morph Market's lead. Okay. Yes. So That's right. Um, Redline Shipping, Redline Science. It's all Redline in my blood. That's what I'm saying. Fucking yeah. you. You bleed red line. I do. Thank you again, brother. I appreciate your time, and I'll talk to you in a little bit, okay? All right, man. Take care of yourself, Chris. See All you right, next you time. too. I'm going to put you in the green room for a minute, okay? All right. All right. Here at Snakes and a Fat Man, we're huge supporters of diversity. We're proving that point here by having our first ever boa breeder as a sponsor on the show. Boa Affliction has been around since 2010, and when they saw the VPI T-positive gene, they immediately shifted their focus and decided to make not just visually stunning albino boas, but they quickly realized that the T-positive snows and sun glows really stood apart from the T-negative albinos that were available at the time. This original VPI gene has maintained its place in the market for the last 10 years and shows no sign of slowing down. Here's the thing. When you invest into your 401k, uh, a 401k for all you ball python people is a fund that you invest in for your retirement. But when you invest in a 401k, you just don't invest in Walmart. You invest in Amazon, Verizon, Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. That's all we're trying to say here. 100% of your collection doesn't have to be ball pythons. Throw a few boas in there and be part of a different type of cool crowd. And when you do do that, invest with Kenny over at Bow Affliction. Great, no bullshit guy with an awesome website. And how in the fuck am I going to say no to a guy who uses this chick in his promo picture? Can't do it. Can't do it. I tried everything. Go check out Kenny today at BoAffliction.com. Sticking with my supporting of diversity, I actually hired a millennial to handle all my social media, but I had to fire him because he didn't show up for work. So I'm just going to leave this picture up here for a little while longer. Just the fucking nicest guy, man. Fucking use the coupon codes I gave you before. Head on over to Redline Shipping and fucking give them a try. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. All right, guys, you, you, you know the usual spiel here. Fucking we drop shows on the 1st and 15th, blah, 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 blah. But, and only but, if you're in a position to help the channel out, head on over to patreon.com slash snakes and the fat man and become a member of the only certified reptile cool guy club on the planet. In the new year, we have a ton of shit that we're planning to do exclusively for the Patreon family only. So believe me, you're going to want to be there. Be badass. Just like all these people over here. All right? Be badass like Adam Clear of Benevolent Reptiles. Courtney and Stephen Caps over at Leviathan Snakes. And James fucking Lewis 
over at the Reptile Gumbo Podcast. I say this all the time, but these people are the reason that I get to keep doing my dumb made-up job here. Lastly, don't forget to head on over to TillValhallaProject.com and pick yourself up a shirt fucking promoting awareness for veteran suicide. I was talking to Shane Kelly today and he told me that this is literally the best charity of the year. 22 a day, man. Not cool. I'll see you in two weeks for what is technically the last main show of the year, uh, although not the last fat man show in general of the year. But this is the last main episode of the year, and I'm going to have a guy that's had a fucking hell of a year this year, uh, good and bad, my old fucking buddy Billy Rose from Mutation Creations. I love you guys, and I'll see you in two weeks, if not before, with one of the fucking 50 other shows that we're doing before December 31st. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate everybody for sticking around, and uh, you just got nothing but love for the fat man. Take it easy, guys. Everyone talks their own shit about what kind of racks you should buy. Metal racks are great, but everyone doesn't want a goddamn seven foot high, six foot wide, 2,000 pound metal rack in their fucking house. That's a two refrigerator footprint, man. Two fucking refrigerators. Sea Serpents makes insane quality racks that could fit anywhere. They're stackable PVC racks that are living room friendly and they're shipped fully assembled with heat tape already installed. Just plug it into a thermostat and you're ready to go. When we had the shop, we had over 20 Sea Serpent racks there before they ever became a sponsor of uh, Snakes and a Fat Man. I don't breed much anymore these days, but I still have a few racks here in my house and you could be goddamn sure that they're Sea Serpents. Oh, and they also make hot box incubators, probably the best reptile incubators made in America. At the height of our breeding business, we had four four foot hot box incubators. And again, I still have a small hot box incubator here in case anything I keep actually does breed. Go to seaserpents.com and check out their incredible selection of PVC racks and tell Chris Nettles that the fat man sent you.